In the early 20th century, a quiet inventor from Utah dared to challenge the limits of science. Thomas Henry Moray, a man of modest beginnings and relentless curiosity, claimed to have unlocked a boundless source of energy from the cosmos itself. This is the story of Moray and his radiant energy device, a tale of ingenuity, controversy, and a vision that remains shrouded in mystery. Moray was born on August 28, 1892, in Salt Lake City, Utah, into a family of Swedish descent. From childhood, he displayed an uncanny aptitude for electricity, sparked by a gift of a crystal radio set. Largely self-educated, he pursued electrical engineering through correspondence courses, supplementing his knowledge with voracious reading. By his teens, he was experimenting with wireless telegraphy, and in his 20s, he worked as an electrical engineer, honing a practical mastery of circuits and power systems. Yet, it was a singular obsession, capturing energy from the universe that would define his life. Married to Ella Reiser, with whom he raised five children, Moray balanced family life with a pursuit that consumed decades. Moray's radiant energy device emerged from this passion. By the 1920s, he claimed to have built a machine that drew electricity from what he called radiant energy, an invisible sea of cosmic particles permeating all space. His apparatus was deceptively simple yet enigmatic, a wooden box roughly 30 inches long, housing an antenna, a series of proprietary detectors, and a mysterious Moray valve. This valve, a blend of germanium-like semiconductors and radioactive materials, was the heart of the system, purportedly converting cosmic vibrations into usable power. Grounded to the Earth and linked to a 50-foot aerial, the device required no fuel, no external input, just the ambient energy of the universe. At the heart of Moray's radiant energy device lay a bold and unorthodox theory, an attempt to define the invisible currents he claimed powered his invention. To Moray, radiant energy was a ceaseless flow of subatomic particles, a dynamic ocean of quanta permeating the universe, distinct from sunlight or electrical grids. He envisioned these particles, perhaps akin to cosmic rays or zero-point fluctuations, as oscillating at unfathomably high frequencies, far beyond the reach of standard instruments. In writings and lectures, he likened them to an eternal broadcast, a reservoir of power sustained by the universe's own motion, independent of human intervention. This energy, he argued, could be captured and converted into usable electricity through precise resonance, a process his mysterious Moray valve facilitated, offering humanity a limitless supply if only science would embrace the paradigm he saw so clearly. Moray said, I began to fully realize that the energy I was working with was not of a static nature, but of an oscillating nature. Further, I realized that the energy was not coming out of the earth, but instead was coming to the earth from some outside source. These electrical oscillations in the form of waves were not simple oscillations, but were surgings, like the waves of the sea, coming to the earth continually, more in the daytime than at night, but always coming in vibrations from the reservoir of colossal energy out there in space. The technical details dazzled onlookers. Moray's device reportedly produced up to 50,000 watts, enough to light dozens of bulbs, run motors, and power heaters. Early versions, tested in 1925, delivered 650 watts through a single tube amplifier, evolving by 1931 into a robust system with multiple stages. He described radiant energy as streams of quanta, akin to light or electrons, oscillating at frequencies beyond conventional measurement, captured via his valve's unique resonance. Demonstrations were meticulous, wires cut to prevent hidden power sources, components inspected by engineers. In one 1928 test, witnessed by a local professor, it ran a 100-watt lamp and a 500-watt iron uninterrupted for hours, all from a box weighing less than 60 pounds. Moray's claims drew fervent support. Engineers like Harvey Fletcher of Bell Labs marveled at the output, unable to trace it to any known source. Businessmen and locals in Salt Lake City saw a future of free energy. Letters from the 1930s preserved by his son John, attest to investors eager to fund a revolution. Proponents viewed Moray as a pioneer tapping a cosmic reservoir, validated by his 50-plus demonstrations over decades. A 1939 speech at Valley State College revealed his conviction. This was not perpetual motion, but a natural force akin to sunlight or gravity, awaiting discovery. Yet skepticism loomed large. 
The scientific community, steeped in thermodynamic orthodoxy, recoiled. Critics demanded the valve's secrets. Moray refused, fearing theft, offering only that it involved Swedish stone and radioactive traces. A 1931 patent application was rejected. Examiners found no natural source of electrical wave energy, credible without full disclosure. Some, like physicist Milton Marshall, labeled it a hoax after failed replications, though Moray insisted only he could tune it. The promise of Moray's radiant energy device faced a dramatic setback in February 1932, when an alleged act of sabotage plunged his work into chaos. According to accounts preserved by his family, a laboratory assistant, identified only as Felix Fraser, a man reportedly tied to competing energy interests, grew volatile during a demonstration. Disillusioned or provoked, Fraser seized a hammer and smashed a working prototype to pieces, shattering months of refinement in moments. Moray, stunned but resolute, salvaged what he could, though the incident deepened his mistrust of collaborators. Witnesses claimed the outburst stemmed from a dispute over the device's secrets, Fraser demanding full disclosure of the Moray valve's composition, which Moray steadfastly withheld. The episode fueled speculation of industrial espionage, though no formal investigation followed, leaving the truth obscured in a haze of rivalry and broken circuits. A decade after the first disruption, Moray's pursuit of radiant energy faced a darker trial in 1941, when a second alleged sabotage left him physically scarred. While working late in his Salt Lake City laboratory, refining a new iteration of his device, Moray encountered an intruder, identity unknown, motives unclear. In the ensuing scuffle, a gunshot rang out, and a bullet grazed his leg, a wound that bled but spared his life. Family accounts suggest the assailant aimed to destroy the equipment, shattering components before fleeing into the night. Moray, undeterred yet shaken, later hinted at shadowy forces, perhaps energy magnates or rival inventors, determined to bury his discovery. No arrests were made, and evidence remained scant, casting the incident as a haunting footnote in his relentless quest, one that steeled his resolve even as it heightened his isolation. Conspiracy whispers grew. Was this suppression by energy tycoons or self-inflicted drama? Moray's later years were bittersweet. He refined his device into the 1940s, powering his home and lab, yet commercial success eluded him. Exhausted by battles, legal, financial, and personal, he withdrew, dying on May 18, 1974, at 81, leaving his son John to champion the legacy. The radiant energy device never entered mainstream science, its valve a lost cipher. Supporters still see a suppressed genius, detractors, a dreamer undone by secrecy.